Welcome home. I want to welcome those that are joining us live and online uh, today. I want to invite you to turn to Psalm chapter 92, Psalm 92. And we're looking at uh, just this one part message entitled, Stop Going to Church. And now some of us are thinking, what does that even mean? Like, I'm here. I've, I've come to church. And, uh, and really the whole, the whole uh, premise to this is stop going to church and start, start being the church. Amen. God's highest calling in our lives was never to just go to church. God's highest calling for believers, those who have confessed that Jesus is Lord, believed in their hearts and, and surrendered their lives over to him as Savior of their lives, is this. God's calling is holiness. But yet so often we live in a world that is all about me. And so guess, guess what we pursue? And, and there's not one person in this room who hasn't pursued it, by the way, starting with me. But we pursue this idea of happiness. What's going to make me happy? Man, what's going to make me feel good? And it's all about me. It's all about me. No, no. As a believer and as a part of the church, God's calling on all of our lives is holiness. He's called us to be holy as he's holy. There's a different standard by which we live, and, and the standard's holiness. So, Lord, I want to be set apart. I just don't want to just, just fall to the standard of the world. I want to live by the standard of your word. So help us to do that. Teach us to do that. And I believe when we come to that conclusion, what happens is we, we do stop just going to church. And we truly start being and living the church. Amen. And so Psalm 92, verses 12 through 15. But the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like cedars of Lebanon. For they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. They will declare, the Lord is just. He is my rock. There is no evil in him. The psalmist is describing what it looks like to be a follower of, of the Lord. What it looks like to pursue the Lord. What it looks like to be surrendered over to the Lord. What it looks like to become a fully devoted follower of Jesus. That's the mission of Discovery Church. The godly will, will flourish. The godly will, will grow strong. The godly's planted. They're transplanted. The godly produce fruit. The godly remain vital and green. That's what we see come alive in, in this text in Psalm 92. I don't know how you, how, how you felt coming in this place. I don't know what you brought to this place. Uh, but perhaps instead of flourishing, if you say today, man, I'm a, I'm a follower of Christ, I'm a follower of Christ. But, but in, perhaps instead of flourishing, that, that, that some of you are spiritually dry. Maybe you're just in this kind of season where it's like, man, I just, I'm just not experiencing the Lord like, like in the last season. Instead of flourishing, some of you are spiritually dry. Instead of thriving, some of you are emotionally withering away rather than connected uh, you're relationally barren you, you think man I could just do this thing on my own I'm just going to isolate myself that's that's the that, that's what needs to happen we were never meant to isolate ourselves we were always meant to be connected uh, and 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 some of you rather than prospering uh, you're you're financially stressed I mean it's the first thing you think about uh, when you wake up it's the last thing you think about before you go to bed and there's lots of arguments throughout the day uh, and so it's <laughs> instead of prospering you're you're absolutely financially stressed and and then lastly uh, rather than fulfilled some of are searching for what really matters yeah. you're searching for what really matters and in Christ what we discover is we discover that there's a flourishing there's a thriving there's a connectedness there's a prospering there's a fulfillment we we discover that in Christ Jesus, and the truth is, as the church discovers it, guess what? It flows out of us into others. Thank you, and that's this whole idea of stop going to church and start being the church so that others will experience who we are in Christ Jesus and what Christ Jesus has to offer a lost and dying, broken world. Amen. We Thank see you. two different evergreens in, uh, in Psalm 92. Do you, do you see these two trees? We see a palm tree. And we see cedar. Do you see the two different trees? Uh, palm trees, palm trees uh, symbolize victory and triumph. Victory uh, and triumph. 
And the, and the, Rom the Romans awarded uh, Olympic champions with, with palm branches. Uh, if you remember, as Jesus marched into Jerusalem, right, uh, they, they, the, the people began to put palm branches on the ground. Why? Because palm branches represent victory and triumph. Do, do you see that in Psalm 92, that the psalmist is declaring those who are godly are like a palm, a palm, a, a palm tree, that they are victorious and there's, there's a, 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 a triumph. And we understand today what the, what the heart of that really is, that because of Christ and Christ Jesus, because Christ Jesus conquered the grave, that we have the victory. It's a triumph. Cedars, cedars, for those who aren't aware, are durable. And they're strong. They were used uh, as beams, as columns, as roofs. And uh, they're, they're just these, these really, really strong, durable uh, trees and, and 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 so the psalmist is describing what it looks like for to be a godly person to grow in godliness and that is that of a victory and triumph and durability these two evergreens they thrive and produce all year around do, do, do you see that these two evergreens they, they they don't just have their seasons but they thrive and produce all year round what a word for the believer that in and out of season, we're called to be ready to, to give a testimony of who Jesus is. Amen. That all year round, we have the, the, the opportunity, because in Christ Jesus, to thrive and produce Jeez. as these trees. Turn to the person next to you and let them know that your life is a seed. Go, go tell the person next to you, your life is a seed. If you can't find somebody, man, you better scoot over. Your life, your life, your life is a seed. And the truth is, a seed can only grow if it's planted. A seed can only grow if it's planted. We all understand this. Amen. Uh, that uh, you just can't put a seed right here on this table and say, okay, it's time to grow. Come on, baby. Grow. Pray. Lord, make the seed grow. I mean, you can, you can certainly pray that, but uh, uh, the seed is just going to stay there. The seed can only grow if it's planted. Look at verse 13. For they are transplanted, the New Living Translation reads, to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God. I love that. I love how New Living Translation uses the word transplanted rather than planted because something happens at that point of salvation. I believe that we're transplanted out of darkness and we're transferred into the light of who Jesus Christ you, Jesus. is. And what, we, what do we see that's happening in the house of God? There's a flourishing that takes place. The godly flourish as they're planted, as they're transplanted in the house of the Lord. There's a flourishing that takes place. Hallelujah. There's growth that takes place. And all of this leads to to a vitality. It leads to a producing of a fruit. And the truth today is that going to church is not the same as being planted. Amen. I mean, we can just go. <laughs> Listen, we go to Walmart once a week, right? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know where you go. But praise God we're not planted in that place. I mean, could you just imagine? I mean, we walk all through that place. We walk all through that place. Going to church isn't the same as being planted in the community of faith. And again, your life is a seed, and it can only grow if it's planted. God's church isn't a part of our lives. It is our lives. And why do I say that? Because worship is a lifestyle. And for many of us, we just think it's that one hour on Sundays or that hour or two during the week when we get together in our, in our discovery group and, 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 and that's it. No, no, no. Worship is a lifestyle. You. Could you imagine? Could you? I, I certainly can. I'm getting hungry. I don't know about you. But uh, can you imagine just eating once a, once a week, twice a week? I mean, we would, we would be starving. And there's something that happens as we live out worship as a lifestyle. The relationship with the living God that we just sung to a moment ago becomes so real in our lives. We're reminded of how good and great he is, that he's fighting our battles, that he's ever present, that his love and mercy and grace are enough. And it's developed. Our relationship develops as we spend time with him. And so I say it again. Worship is, is a lifestyle, Amen. and it must be a lifestyle. What does it look like tomorrow when you wake up? What is your tomorrow going to look like? 
Are you just going to wait till next Sunday to come back for this by faith series in Hebrews, which it's going to be powerful, but, but, but you can't just wait for another week to go by to be able to develop that relationship with the living God. Amen. Man, just think about this for a moment ago, or just think about this for a moment and allow this to just blow your mind. I often, I, I often do this, a practice in just my life. I, I, I just pause and I think the creator of all things wants a relationship with me. Mm. You think about that for a moment. The one who has created all things and sustains all things wants to hear from me, wants to spend time with me, wants to embrace me, wants to remind me of, that there's worth in him, that there's a calling on my life. You, the creator of all things. Just let that just blow your mind Amen. for a moment. And then put, it in, put that into practice. Uh, but again, church is not a, a place that we just go to. It's not a destination. It's not a landmark. It, it, it's not an address. We are the church. Woo. When Jesus came to fulfill the mission of God over 2,000 years ago, listen, listen. when Jesus came, he, he, he wasn't thinking about the building that we're about to build off 25th Street, right? I'm coming to, to, to die and be crucified on a cross that my blood would be shed for that awesome building that's going to be built if it's ever going to be built uh, off 25th. No, no, no. Jesus came. Jesus came for his blood to be shed for you, for me, for all humanity. We are the church. It's not a building. It's not a landmark. I love Jesus' declaration in Matthew 16, verse 18. Matthew 16, 18. Write this down, and, and this is just a strong reminder of who we are in Christ. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. Whose church? Jesus. Jesus' church. This is my church, right? Now, can I just say, it's not Tim O'Carroll's church, not Pastor Mike, not, no, no other leadership. No, it's, it's Jesus. Discovery is Jesus' church. And, and Jesus said, hey, I'm going to build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Now, I'm a visual person. Any, any visual people out there? Cool. And so we were just recently in Israel in January. And Jesus is gathering the disciples together in an area called Caesarea Philippi. Right? And so he's, he's gathering these disciples together in Caesarea Philippi. Well, well we, we stopped in Caesarea Philippi in January and we took some pictures. And I just want to show you where this scripture comes alive. Where this picture, uh, this, this scripture comes alive through this picture. Now this is our group. They're underneath this tree. And I'm on top of this, this, this little rock, uh, and, uh, and I'm looking down on our group. I have the whisperer in. I'm listening to what the guide is talking about, the person that's sharing the devotional. And I'm just kind of by myself for a moment, just kind of taking this all in. Remember the declaration that, Jesus, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Do you see the, the visual? Now go to the next. What the group is actually as they're down there, they're looking up and they're seeing many uh, carving cut out of this mountain, uh, monuments, places where pagan worship took place. Jesus, Jesus chooses this place in Caesarea Philippi to, to, to declare to the disciples that he's about to build his church and that the gates of hell would not prevail. What a place to make that proclamation, that declaration in a place where there were all forms of pagan worship happening. Now, the next slide is known as the gate of, of hell, literally the gate of, of hell. That was another place of pagan worship. And so Jesus is given this visual that, hey, you can practice whatever you want to practice. People will practice whatever they want to practice. But guess what? I am building my church today and no other form of idol will stand in my way. No other form is going to prevail. I'm building my church. Amen. Now, where that word church, ecclesia, turn to the person next to you let them know it's ecclesia. It's ecclesia. Go on, tell them. Tell them. We're going to learn today. We're going to learn something today. Amen. Ryan, say amen. Ecclesia. There we go. All right. Ecclesia. It's two words. It's two words. It's the word assembled and it's the word called out. Turn to the person next to you let them know it means assembled and called out. We need people to know this today. We need people to know this today. 
you. If you're not next to somebody, I told you better get next to somebody. Assemble and call out. These are the two words that we find in the Greek, ekklesia. I will build my, my church. The word church, ekklesia, means assembled and called out. Jesus is saying, I'm not about to build just a building. No, no, I'm about to build a people. I'm about to start a movement. Yes. And then we, we know what happens <coughs> with the rest of the gospel. He's crucified on a cross. Why? For a building? No. But for people. He's placed in a grave. When everyone thought it was over, counted them out, man, Jesus rose victorious from that grave. So that you and I could be brought into relationship with him. So that there could be meaning and significance here on this earth, but a hope beyond this earth. Amen. And your life, again, is a seed. And in order, in order to grow, it's got to be planted. Uh, turn to Jeremiah 17. It's on the screen. You can write this reference down, Jeremiah 17. And, and as, you're, as you're looking at this reference, I also want to encourage you to write this down. When you, are, when you are planted, your roots grow deep. When you're planted, your roots grow <coughs> deep. They are like trees planted along the riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Do you, do you see the scripture? Yes. They're like trees Planted along the riverbank. Again, this is a reference to the godly. Those who are flourishing. You and I in Christ Jesus were planted. And as we're planted, the roots reach deep into the water. When you planted, your roots grow deep. A few years ago, my youngest brother, I have five siblings, three brothers, two sisters. And my youngest brother went and visited Redwood. Anyone ever heard of Redwood, ever visited Redwood in, in, in California? And it, Redwood is home to the largest living organisms in the world. And that's a tree called a Redwood. And this tree, the trees can grow up to 300 feet. And uh, the trunk can grow, uh, or they can grow as wide as 30 feet. I mean, it, it's pretty incredible. And years and years ago, I remember my brother taking all these kinds of pictures, and there's one picture of him right here. This is my brother. He wanted it to be like a vintage picture. Uh, he, he, he was cool. And so uh, he's uh, hanging out. That's actually him hanging out on a, a, one of the broken uh, trees. But you can see the, the redwoods behind him. You can see those redwoods behind him. He visited. And uh, go, to that, go to the next slide. There's two, two, two pictures here. and <laughs> That's a picture uh, of the redwoods. And then the next one. The next one is, is the trunk, and, and you can see just how massive these trees are. How massive. Do you see how massive these trees are? Well, interesting thing about redwoods I, I've learned um, is that they, they grow laterally off of the trunks, and they intertwine with each other, and the reason is to help support one another. Wow. These trees are the largest organisms in the world, and, and, and they still stay standing because of the support from the other trees. This is what happens when you get planted and you're connected. You're able to sustain the trials of life, the winds as they come. We can learn a lot from the trees as God created. But one of the things we come to understand is when you're planted, your roots grow deep. The second thing is when you're planted, your roots produce fruit. Look at Jeremiah 17. Again, such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Such trees, the, the, which trees? The trees that are planted. Not the, not the ones that have a desire one day. No, no, no. The trees that are planted. Such trees, such trees. They're not bothered by heat. They're not bothered by drought. And one thing we know about heat, there are fiery trials in all of our lives. Man, some of you are walking through some fiery trials right now. Amen. And can I just encourage you, man, plant yourself upon the solid rock who is Jesus Christ. And so, if you do that, one of the beautiful things is that you'll never be alone. And he is walking with you right now in the midst of your trial, whatever it may be. The other is we see this drought. No matter the no matter the, 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 the fire or the drought. Drought is, is a time when nothing's happening. I mean, have you ever been there? You're just waiting and waiting and waiting. It's like, Lord, is this thing ever going to shake? 
man, is this thing ever going to happen? And what happens in those moments? Can we, let's be honest. In those moments that all these thoughts begin to race in our mind, we begin to question almost everything. Sadly, some even give up. But what do we see in the scriptures? That those who are planted and their roots are growing deep, we see that they're not bothered by the heat. They're not bothered by the drought. And in fact, even in the midst of the heat and in the drought, they still produce. They still produce. They, they thrive and produce. They're not bothered. They're not shaken. They're not rattled. I want you to know today that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's come to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to shake you up. He wants to rattle you. He wants to steal your joy. Uh -uh. You don't give him another step. Thank you, Jesus. Now you surrender. You continue, continually surrender over to the lordship of Jesus Christ that he is, once again, your rock Thank and your you, protector. And you stay focused on King Jesus. Galatians 5 describes the fruits of the Spirit. Describes nine different fruits of the Spirit. Nine different fruits of the Spirit. Scripture says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Now again, Paul's talking to the church in Galatia. And, and so he's talking to believers here. And he's talking to these believers and he's saying that there's something produ being produced in you and through you. There, there's a change that's taken place in your life because you've surrendered over to the Lord Jesus. And he's saying there's some, there's some fruit that's produced in your lives as you walk in Christ Jesus. And do you see, do you see right here, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It says there is no law against these things. He's producing these things in our lives. A lot of us don't, we, 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 I hear it all the time, man, I don't want to pray for patience. Because patience, patience is a thing of that, of the drought. You see that patience is a thing of the, it's like that drought, I, I, I can't wait no, no more. <laughs> I don't, I know, Lord, no. So I don't want to pray for patience. Can I just tell you, as a follower of Jesus, developing in a relationship with Jesus, one of the best things you could do is to, is to actually pray for patience. Knowing that he's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the patience. He's going to give you the love. He's going to give you the joy. He's going to give you the peace. He's going to give you everything that you need. Because there's the development that needs to happen in our lives. See the truth is this church. The truth is this. We don't want to pray for the things that are going to make us a, a stronger spiritual giant. Often. I mean just be honest with yourself. What would it look like, though, to just allow the Lord to develop you with the fruits of His Spirit? To make you into the man, woman that He has created you to be. And that He's called you to be. We see it again in Jeremiah. Don't miss that. The trees that are planted and the roots that are growing deep no matter the heat, no matter the drought, they are still standing and producing. And I believe that's what he's called us to do. Man, he's called us to remain and produce. Amen. That breaks my heart. I just want to be honest just for a moment. It breaks my heart as a pastor. Man, when I see somebody walking through a trial and they just give up and turn away. They just walk away from the church, and I'm like, I just, everything in me just breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. So I wonder today, what does it look like for you? Where are you in Christ Jesus? Are you planted? Are your roots growing deep? Are you producing fruit? One thing we've come to understand is that fruit is not just for you. Can we just look at this just for a second? Fruit is not just for you. Man, fruit's to share. 
uh, fruit is enjoyed by others, right? I mean, you can sit here and just eat it all day, but something happens. Uh, we were driving down the road the other day, and it's got a cool story. And, uh, and, uh, and, and one of the girls says, hey, can I have a piece of the apple that's in the front? We had some apples in the front. So I just said, yes. And so next thing I know, I look back, and all three ladies, man, they're, they're enjoying and laughing about and as they're eating some, some apples. Fruit is not just for you. See, the Lord's producing it inside of you to pour it out into others. And so, so don't miss this. Don't miss this. That love overflows. Man, that joy spreads. That peace is attractive. That kindness blesses. That faithfulness strengthens relationships. It's the fruit of the Spirit being developed in you and through you. And I, I just want to encourage you. Discover the thrill of being used by God. Discover the thrill of being used by God. I want to say something else about this. You were not just saved from your sin. A lot of us, I mean, we, we, we just think it just start, it stops right there. No, no, no. We weren't just saved from our sin. And we were saved from our sin and we were saved to serve. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to lay his life down as a ransom for many. That's a calling in our lives, to model the life of our Savior Jesus. We weren't just saved from sin. Man, we were saved to serve. And I, I'd say this boldly, unapologetically. Listen and hear my heart and love is that if you can't get planted and produce fruit, here within discovery get planted and produce fruit somewhere else listen I, we're not trying to build the biggest church in the kingdom of God we're trying to build the kingdom of God thank you Jesus that's it thank you. so if you can't get planted and produce fruit man, let's sit down let's have a conversation go somewhere where you can get planted and produce fruit. Stop going to church. Start being the church. This thought as we close of expecting to defeat the power of darkness. Remember what Jesus said, I'll build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail. Many times as followers of Jesus, I mean, we have this, this idea that, I mean, it is a, we're in a spiritual warfare. Did you know that? Amen. We're in a spiritual warfare. Amen. And the enemy's coming against you. The attacks. The enemy wants to pull you back in the darkness. And do we really expect that we can defeat the powers of darkness by just going to church once a month? Listen, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. I mean, do we really expect to defeat the powers of darkness when we spend more money on coffee than we do giving to the work of the ministry? Woo, ain't going to happen. Uh, do we really expect to defeat the powers of darkness when we spend more hours in one day on a social media platform than we spend an entire month serving in the local church? Say it. Church it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. That saint's coming after you, strong. Teach us to pull you back into the darkness. Thank you. Jesus, listen, Jesus wants you to experience his light and to be changed and transformed forever. And then the development, as you spend time with Jesus, the development that happens in you, flowing into someone else. Isn't that, after all, what the Great Commission is all about? Go make disciples that make disciples that make disciples. Baptize them, teach them. And some say, as we close today, some say, man, I've tried. I've tried. I try to do this church thing. I try to do this giving thing. I try to do this serving thing. I try to do all this stuff. Just didn't work. My response to this is we're talking about trees today. Trees don't grow overnight. I'm learning a little bit about growing trees, by the way, in our, in our property, in our home, on our home property. And I planted six trees. And today, uh, uh, two are successfully still living. And so uh, I feel like that's a pretty good number. <laughs> I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, help this tree, man. Help this tree to live. <laughs> but I'm learning a lot about trees. 
And in our minds, man, we want that instant thing. We want that, that, that we're, we're saying, Lord, I prayed for it once. Where is it? You know what I'm saying? It's like the genie, man. We went and saw Aladdin the other night. And not, okay, but, but uh, yeah, that, that's a lot of our perspective is I got three wishes, right? <laughs> but it's this thing of time. Trees take time to grow. So I'm learning a little bit about trees and I'm learning what seeds need to grow and flourish. I want to share as we close with you. Here's what I've learned about what seeds need to grow and flourish. One, a soil. Soil. Turn to the person next to you and let them know. Seeds need soil. Listen, not just kind of any kind of soil, right? That's right. But a fertile soil. It's got to be a fertile soil. Man, I, I believe this is on our hearts. Man, this is our hearts. Some of you have some hard hearts just straight up saying it right now. And, and the best thing you could do today is say, Lord, soften my heart. Change my heart. I no longer want to live with a hardened heart. I want a soft heart. A fertile heart. Second, light. Light. God's word is a lamp to guide your, your feet. Trees need light. We need light. If we're going to grow in Christ, we need light. And how can we do this, this life without His Word as authority for our lives and guiding our paths? Third, water. And a ton of water. Not just like a little bit of water, but seeds need a ton of water. It's like newborns, any parents in the house? It's like that one bottle is not going to last for the day, right? No, trees, man, they need a lot of water. So do we. We need that. If we're going to grow, we're going to flourish. We need a lot of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the living water. If you're thirsty, what did he say? Come to me. He says, come to me. The next is, is temperature. The right temperature. Thankfully, in Florida, we have a consistent, that, that of a consistent temperature, Right? No freezing points necessarily, maybe three times a year. I don't know. But uh, a temperature. I believe, man, that we need the fire of the Holy Spirit guiding us, convicting us, challenging us, comforting us daily in our lives. First Thessalonians says, don't stifle the Holy Spirit. Because so many times with our actions and our words, what we do, we stifle Amen. the Holy Spirit. And lastly, time. Seeds need time to grow and flourish. The best time to be planted, listen, was 20 years ago. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The best time for, for, for you to be planted in Christ was 20 years ago. But listen, may, maybe today you, you said, man, I, I wasn't planted 20 years ago. I'm not planted. Can I just tell you the second best time to plant a tree is, is right now today. Amen. The best time to become planted in Christ is today. Would you bow your heads? Would you close your eyes? All across this room. I don't know what your response is today to God's word, but could I just ask you before you leave this place, just take a moment and say, Lord, show me what my response needs to be. I want to be planted in you. Maybe there's some here today. You need to stop looking back on your past. Stop living in with the regrets and the shame, surrender it all over to the Lord. And start living for Him. Start living for Him. As people are praying all over this place, maybe there's someone here that's never surrendered your life over to Jesus. And I want you to know that today that can happen. You can experience the salvation of the Lord today because of what Jesus has accomplished on and off of the cross. So right where you're sitting, if that's you, you've never surrendered your life over to Jesus. As people are praying all over this place, 
Would you just say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I need you to save me. I believe that you came to this earth, that you died on a cross, that you were placed in a grave, and that you rose victorious from the grave. I confess, Jesus, that you are Lord of my life. If that's you, right where you're sitting, would you just thank him? Thank him for saving you. Lord, we come before you, thankful for, once again, how good you are, for how much you love us, for the plan that you have for all of our lives. Lord, for the opportunity to be the church, to live out worship as a lifestyle, to be planted and produce fruit. And so, Lord, I pray that you would speak to all of us. Show us. Show us how. Show us our next step in being planted and producing fruit. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen.